Hello, Keith here. Today, welcome to Math, Fun, and Games. Today, we're going to play Scenario 1, the basic scenario. We're just going to use the basic rules of MBT. I, myself, am still learning the NBT Panzer system. Now, Panzer and NBT are basically the same game. Panzer is the system adapted to World War II, and MBT is a system adapted to a 1986. I would suggest, just reading the rules, that you start with Panzer first, because MBT, because it is 1986, adds a lot to the Panzer system. It adds helicopters, reactive armors. It adds a lot of things that didn't even exist during World War II. So it's a, it's a more complex system, but the basic game for both is basically the same. But I think Panzer, I, I happen to buy MBT and I have one of the, the West German modules, so I'm gonna work with a MBT right now. I, I plan to do, I like to do at least one scenario in the Panzer MBT system every day. I like to keep my videos under 15, preferably between 15 and 30 minutes because small bite size, it makes it easier. I, in addition to not boring the, the people who listen, it makes it easier for me to record because recording isn't easy because you have to be careful what you're saying and you just have to be aware that you're speaking to an audience and you have to describe things. So it's a lot and you have to make sure your sound is correct and things like that. So it is a little bit more involved to record, but it is a lot of fun too. I love, I love sharing with people. Thank you for letting me talk about this. So I'm going to get right into the game. The rules I'm using are just the basic rules. What I'm going to do as I add rules is I'm going to take GMT, the basic, they have the, you can download the basic and the advanced rules from the GMT website. And I'm going to highlight the rules that I'm using in each game. And I'm going to post a link to the rules that I'm using in each game. I'm going to little by little, I want to, if I can do one every day, that's 365 videos. I'm going to go through both the Panzer and the MBT systems and have a lot of fun with that. I'm also doing on my channel, I'm doing Panzer Blitz too. I'm doing, I'm going to do Panzer Blitz, Panzer Leader, and Arab Israeli Wars. But right now, my focus at this moment is on MBT. So the first scenario we have, let me pull back. And this is a simple scenario. So up north, you have NATO. This right here is the equivalent of a company of an armored, of a company of an armored unit. I've broken it down into one, two, three, four different platoons. We have a commander track, commander's track here. We have the first sergeant's track here. And over here have the XO is with this group right here. In this version of the game, each unit gets a command mark, gets its own command. As we go on in the more advanced roles, you can share commands. So each as we go on the advanced rules, each one of these platoons can have its own command. Also, in the, not just the advanced rules, but the optional rules, or is it in the advanced rules? You have command radius. So every vehicle has to be within the command, command radius. So this setup, will also work for the advanced game. But right now, we're just going to use basic rules. And down south here, we have the Russians have a little bit different alignment. I th so we have four, we have three platoons 
And I think you only have one command track here, right there. So it's a little bit different for the Russians. I may be missing a command track. I can't believe that they would only have one command track, but I have this set up and they only have one command track. So we're gonna go with that. So I'm going to go down and I'm also, all right, so here's the chart. So the sequence of play. The first phase I'm gonna go is the spotting phase. For the first turn, I'm going to go very quickly through it because nobody can see anybody. So I don't believe anybody can see anybody yet. We do have this American on level one, two, level three hills. Excuse me. Let's get back to that. So we do have this American right here on a level three hill. And these units to the left, this Russian, the first Russian platoon is in woods. This unit to the right, they might actually be in line of sight. Let's pull back and see. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the line of sight marker right here. And I'm going to move all the way to the head vehicle. So that's distance that is a distance of 28 hexes away let's go to the spotting chart so the spotting chart you have spotting spotting ranges right here range zero vehicle so you can see up to 20 hexes away and it's at 28 hexes. So that is unspotted. It's too far away. Now, I'm going to say they started the game, stopped. Now, if they were moving, they would be spot move and they would go up to the 40 hexes away. So that unit would be able to see them if it had line of sight. Clear terrain. Okay. So let's, even though it isn't important, let's check line of sight. So we have, now the question is blind spots. This unit, uh, which obstacles can cause blind spots? These woods right here are level three. Actually, these woods right here cause a blind spot. Woods in this game are level three. This unit is at the same height as the top of these woods, which is level three. So going down right here, woods, level three. And it's the tabletop effect. These units create an infinite blind spot behind them. As you have level three, because this is on level three, this is on level three. So let's say you're on a tabletop. If you're near the end of the tabletop, you can see things below it, below the, the table. But if you're in the middle of the table, the only thing you're going to be able to see is the table. So there is no line of sight there. If those woods weren't in the way, and these woods weren't in the way, and these woods weren't in the way, there might be a line of sight there. I'm going to turn off the line of sight marker. So we did the spotting phase. Let's. I'm going to pull up the, and this is going to go faster as we go on, as the weeks go on. But everybody's just learning right now. So that's the spotting phase. Nobody spotted. Command phase. Because we're in the basic game, everybody gets a command. Everybody here might be moving. Let's move forward and see what we got here. This unit that's on this hill is not going to be moving. I'm going to give it the overwatch command. Let's look at the command markers. Moving pieces. Let's put an overwatch command. Let's 
I'm going to put one of every game marker. So I'm going to put this vehicle right here, the Exos vehicle. I'm going to put them in Overwatch. I'm going to clone it and drop an Overwatch command on it. So that's a good position at the top of the hill. And both of these vehicles right here are going to have a move command. It. You're going to have a move command. This one's going to have a move command. So every other vehicle, I'm going to put a move command on here for the Americans. Every other American vehicle, I'm going to put a move command on. And just like that, with magic, I put a move command. Actually, I took a pause from but. I put a move command on all American vehicles. These are all, except for the command tracks, these are all M1 tanks. I'm not sure what type of unit the command tracks. The command tracks are M60A3s. I have these four command markers that are attached to units. I'm just having them there so I can clone them and put them on vehicles. So now let's take a look at the Russian situation over here. Moving back. The Russians are all going to be moving. And just like magic, all the Russian vehicles have move commands on them. Over here, I have some other, I like the fire counters, the overwatch, and the short haul commands right there. So, let's move on to the next phase. Russians are moving north, Americans are moving south. They're going to a river. The river is crossed by bridges and forts, and they're both going to try to destroy each other and control the bridges and the fords. That's the command phase, the initiative phase. The initiative phase is in the basic game is a straight D100 die roll, higher wins. In the more advanced game, it would be modified by the experience level of the forces but we're not doing the advanced game and all forces right now are both forces are seasoned. So I have to make two D 100s. I'm going to roll for the Warsaw Pact first. Warsaw Pact gets a 17. I'm going to roll for the Americans. Americans get 58. So Americans get the initiative. So they get to move and fire first. That's the initiative phase. The next phase is going to be the first air phase. We don't have any air units. Combat phase. We have an indirect fire combat step. That's an advanced rule. Direct fire combat step. No one has line of sight, so they can't do direct fire. Moving forward, we have the movement phase. Close assault, we don't have any close assault or hand to hand. And that's how you normally would begin the movement phase, but you would have closer assault and hand to hand. That's an advanced. Number one, it's advanced. Well, number two, you need infantry for that. We're not going to have overrun combat because, again, you overrun infantry and they're called leg units, infantry and towed units. So we're just going to have movement. The Americans are going to move first. And everybody who has a move command can move or short haul command. Now this is one area where this game's a little bit different from other games like ASL and that you might be familiar with. In that 
if you look at this counter over here, each vehicle has its own road movement rate. Rather than saying each hex is one half a movement point, each vehicle has its own specific road movement rate. So over here you see 5T. The T means it's a track vehicle. 5 means that you have 5 movement points if you're just going cross country and not doing road movement. 7 is moving along a path, 11 is moving along a row. So all these units can go 11 hexes. So I'm going to move them as a group. So I'm going to count first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Up to this point, they're all moving together. And then I'm going to move the first vehicle by itself. It's, it's going to, I want to rotate it so that faces down the road. I'm going to zoom in. So that's going to be, there you go. So it moved 9, 10, 11, and then it's going to have its free combat arc change at the end. And it's going to go, this unit is going to do the same thing. Turn, forward, turn. This unit's just going to go over there. That's those units. Next, we got the commanders and the first sergeant's track. They're going to go across country. They only have five moving points to crow across country. Over here, it looks like they have to go through a gully. Let's look at the terrain modifier chart. And let's look at gully. Gully. T is a track vehicle. Track vehicle for gully is cost two movement factors. So one, two, three, four, five. And this vehicle is going to be right here. Okay. These units, they're all traveling on a road. They're going to have 11 movement factors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're on 09. 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to stretch them out along this road facing in the forward direction. So let's move them up. I'm going to go down this road. Drive on, drive on, drive on. It's going to do a turn, and he's going to end up right here. And the other two vehicles are going to move forward. Oopsie. Down this road. Right here. And the other vehicle right next to it. Right there. Let's move back a little bit. Right. So that's those American units. Next we have. I don't want to touch those units on a hill yet. These units right here are on the side. Okay. They're going to move as a group. They're going cross country. I'm not going to use the road. They're going to go one, two, three, four, three, five. Let's pull back on the map and make sure I did that right. One. Okay, lead unit one starts right here. One, two, three. Okay, they can move forward two more. Four, five. Excellent. Now on the hill. 
That's actually a good position on the hill. Excuse me. So this unit is going to go up a hill. Let's look at cost to go up a slope. Or hill. Plus one for track vehicles. So this unit, that'll be two, and then he'll stop. I can actually, you have a stacking limit of five vehicles per hex. I'm actually going to move this unit right up here with this other unit. And this unit's going to go one, two... Then he's going to do a rotation. I actually moved this vehicle right here just into this hex right here. So I have three vehicles right here by each other. And you can have up to five vehicles in a hex without penalty. So that's the movement for the Americans. Now we have one unit over here that's in Overwatch. I believe that's the Exos track. So I'm just going to put them at the top of the stack. Okay, so we have one unit doing Overwatch for the Americans. Now the Russians are going to be moving. Okay. So we have these three units in the lower right. This center hex, I have two vehicles in the same hex. Now the scale for this game, each hex is basically 100 meters. It's roughly the length of a football field, give or take. So you can fit a lot of vehicles. These units are going to follow the road. And they have 14 row movement points. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Do they have eleven, did I say? Fourteen. Twelve. Now, remember, we have that guy with Overwatch fire right here. And since these units are all going together, I'm going to move them together. Right there. This one, I want to re-rotate that. Let's rotate that. Right here. Okay, greetings. So I did a line of sight check from this unit that has overwatched on this hill to this unit that just went on this hill. All right, so I checked some things. So line of sight for units who are doing overwatch fire is determined at the time of movement. So this unit back here on this hill is at the same level as this unit on this hill right here. And the range is 21 hexes. So if you look at the spotting range card, it'll be zero, but the unit's moving. So you'll go up. So that vehicle that's moving can be spotted up to 40 hexes away. 21 is less than 40. So it is spotted. So now we're going to do the fire. Okay, I stepped away, but now I'm back. Now we have a shot. So this unit that's doing overwatch fire right here has a shot at this other Russian tank moving on the hill right here. Here's the, here's the unit with the overwatch fire. 
So the unit with the Overwatch fire, shoot, it's an M60A3. Let's look at its card. M60A3 data cards. Okay, so let's take a look at the range. So it's 105 millimeter kinetic energy. There's two types of weapons fire. There's kinetic energy and there's uh, chemical explosives. Chemical explosives, it basically does a little explosion and tries to burn through the armor. Uh, kinetic energy is kind of like a really high-tech bullet. So what's the range? So the range between them is greater than 6, greater than 12, but it's less than 22. So the range is going to be medium range. So now we're going to go to chart, and we have medium range. So it's a base 50 to hit out of 100. So now we're going to go through the modifiers. So the first modifier we have is target size. So I'm going to take a look at the card. All right, so it's a T72 Alpha Victor AB. T72 AB. So let's go to the Soviets. And we look at T72 AB. And I have, let's see if this has a size modifier. So if you look right here under defensive information size, so there's no size modifier. Let's see if there's any other modifiers. So there's no size modifier. The unit, the target is moving. So target is moving. So you have gun and anti-tank and missiles. So it's going to be minus two. Does the, is the target under cover? Let's take a look at that. That hex, I believe, is a clear hex. Let's zoom in. this okay so that is a clear hex so far we have a minus two there's no cover we are a short halt the shooter is in damage is suppressed a lot of these are advanced rules and a lot of these modifiers only apply to some of these modifiers only apply as optional rules. Overwatch, so minus one, so it's minus three total. It's not defensive fire. So it's minus three, so the base is 50, but we have to go down three columns. One, two, three. So the base to hit is a 35. Okay, so now I'm going to roll the D100. We need 35 or less to hit. And I believe we rolled a 72. Okay, I believe we rolled a 72. Yes, we did. 72. So that's a miss. So we're done. Now I can, we're going to have to mark the unit that fired right here with a fire marker. There we go. To show that that particular unit fired. And we'll go to unit markers. And it's, it'll be a move, but then we flip it over. And we'll mark that with the fire. And there you go. So that's it for the combat phase. There are no other units. There is this tank right here next to the unit that fired.
but it only have move command, so it cannot fire. And that's it for the combat phase. Now we go in, now let's look at the chart. So after the, that was the movement phase. So after the movement phase is the adjustment phase. So we're in the adjustment phase. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to place every movement counter with a spotted movement counter. Down. Like it right there. So I'm going to remove the movement, move it. I'm going to re remove the move counter and replace it with a spotted move counter. And this is important because when we do the spotting phase next turn, whether you moved or fired this turn could affect its ability to be spotted next turn. Okay, I made a mistake. I didn't finish the Russian movement phase. So they have 11, 12, 13, 14. This unit will pivot to the right. Go. I'm just going to move the rest of these as a group. Excellent. Now, those units have moved. So I have some Russian units down here that are going to move. They're going to go up the same hill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So those, are, those units are still within the stacking limit. The stacking limit is 5 per hex. And that's a good place. They have a good view. And I have these four units right here who are going to go forward. And I have some more Russian units to move. So I have these units down here in the corner. So on their, their road movement rate is 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right there. And the other units. These are all going to fall, follow behind. Two, three, and one more. There we go. And I want to pivot all of these to the left. I want to pivot that last guy. Oh. Okay. And then I want to pivot him to the right. So let's back up a little bit and take a look at what we have here. Okay. 
So the American units up north So here are the American units up north. You have how many vehicles on this hill? One, two, three. You have four vehicles on that height right there. You have th a platoon of M1 tanks coming down the side here slowly. You have these three tanks already in a position to have a gun battle with these tanks. You have the XO, I mean, you have the commanders in the first sergeant's track back here and you have three tracks right here. For the Russian, they have five armored fighting vehicles moving here down. On the left side, they have a unit coming over this hill to go into this plains area and they have a four vehicle stack on that hex to have fire against that other, the, the American units on that hill and against the valley area. It's not wise to stack sometimes four units in the same location, especially if you have certain types of indirect fire, which can be very deadly, but we don't have indirect fire here, so I'm just going to stack them all together. Normally you want to spread out your units. So now I'm going to mark all the Russian units with a move marker. Voila! Through the magic of the pause button, I have now marked every Russian vehicle with a move marker. Let's just zoom in, take a look. So every unit Take a look at that. So that's the marker you use. You mark, replace the commands with this marker right here. Because these affect the spotting phase. These make it easier to spot these units because they moved. And up here, you have an example. Replace the Overwatch command because you replace all commands at the end of the turn. And if a unit moves, you put a move marker on it. If a unit fires, you put a fire marker on it. And that right there is the end of the first turn. I thank you for watching my videos. I try to make them both entertaining and educational. I'm learning along with you. And thank you for taking this learning journey with me.